Hello and welcome to the Flower of Light Mystery School. And today I'm joined again with by sorry Christine. Hello. And Charlotte. Hello. And just to say before we start, Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year, 2020. New Year. And I hope everybody had um, a great Christmas and that everybody has an abundant, successful, and prosperous New Year. Mm-hmm. So um, today I just wanted to talk about, um, in particular, the temple where the flower of life symbol is found in Egypt, which is known as the Osirian, and it's in Abydos, um, which is kind of in between Luxor and Cairo, uh, more or less, in the middle between Luxor and Cairo. So um, Abydos, in terms of the seven seals of the Nile. That's something I just want to quickly explain. The seven seals of the Nile were seven areas in ancient Egypt that represented the seven chakras in the human body. And the river Nile itself represented the pranic tube or um, the physical spine. So it was also um, symbolic on one level of the spine of Osiris, the physical spine of Osiris. Uh, the River Nile. And Osiris, if we can get it in our head from the beginning, that Osiris represented every human being Mm -hmm. in physical Mm -hmm. manifest incarnation. So Osiris represented everybody, male or female, even though he's kind of considered male. Mm -hmm. But he actually represented everybody in the third dimension, if you like. Yeah, everyone in the physical body. Yeah. So um, the temple at Abydos which is, um, there's two temples, If you, well, there's more than two, but the ones I want to talk about are the Seti First Temple and the temple that's built below the Seti First Temple, which is the Osirian Temple, which is kind of out the back of the Seti First Temple. Yeah. And it's below ground. Now, the Seti First is not built on top of it, but it is very close to it. Hmm. Um, the two temples are very close. But the Osirian Temple, which is way older, and that's where the, the Flower of Life symbol is found, is um, and was before it was excavated approximately 50 feet below ground. Mm-hmm. 50 um, feet. Well, below, um, if you can imagine all the Nile silt and, yeah. you know, it was excavated in the 1920s. Mm. Maybe 50 feet is, is not exactly accurate, but I know it was quite deep below ground oh, yeah. um, when Flinders Pe- Petrie excavated it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I want to talk about... Um, the, as I mentioned, the seven seals of the Nile. So, you know, I've mentioned in other podcasts that the whole of Egypt was and mirrored the human body. Mm. Now, it also mirrored, as we mentioned before, the stars in the sky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's according to the law of correspondence as above, so below. That everything is a mirror image of everything else on smaller and larger scales. And that's where, for example, the geometry comes into it because it's the ratios, like the phi ratio, mm. for example. Mm. Um, the what ratio? The, the phi ratio. P H I phi. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, one point six one eight. So the phi ratio is also known as the golden number, and it's the number by which your physical body grows mm-hmm. from one cell mm-hmm. to a fully formed adult. And it, the phi ratio is a ratio, is exactly as it says. It's a mm-hmm. ratio between one number or one measurement mm-hmm. and another. Yeah. And it's based on the, on the same number in smaller and larger scales, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So what it, what it, the, effectively what it does is it makes sure that um, your body, when it's growing, mm-hmm. grows in perfect proportion and harmony. Yeah, yeah it's a harm, like a harmonic, yeah. Yeah. So just as a quick example, uh, Russian dolls, and I probably gave this example before. Mm -hmm. So the way they can fit perfectly one inside the other. Yeah. So that term is uh, nested fractals Mm -hmm. is what that's called. So, um, and I'm just kind of elaborating that point because the Osirian temple is where the flower of life symbol is found in Egypt in its full, in its symbol form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's encoded in all the temples, but it's found in the actual symbol form that we'd be familiar yes, saying. Yes, physically the, on the side of a on, pillar. On, yeah. on the is pillar. Is that the only place it's like fully formed? Yes, there? yeah. Mm. It's, well, it's the only place, place that's, that's you know, that we know so of far. that's uh, been found. There could be more places, but they might be under the same. Yeah. Um, there's, it's part, the parts and sections of it are left mm-hmm. in other temples, like in Luxor Temple, for example. Yeah. Um, but the fully formed symbol yeah. 
That's right. is, yeah, is only the, in the Osarium mm -hmm. on one of the granite pillars. Yeah. So I just want to give you the foundation of that information. So the seven seals of the Nile are literally seven areas. And an area in, the, in, in what I mean by an area is it, an area could contain 10, 11, 12 temples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's seven areas up along the Nile that represent the main seven chakras in our, in our body, if mm -hmm. you like. And so in relation to that, the reason I'm telling you that is because I want you to know where Abydos is yeah. in relation to those chakras. So Abydos would represent the heart chakra. Yes, yeah, the heart chakra, yeah. Okay. And as I mentioned, um, the seven seals of the Nile don't just represent the physical body. Mm -hmm. They do represent that, but it's not all they represent. Yeah. They also represent the stars above. Mm. But they also represent in terms of energy as well. Mm -hmm. it's, there's, it's like an onion. There's so many layers mm -hmm. to this. And one of the important things out of this podcast, if people get nothing else, what I want people to understand is that to understand the ancient mind, and, that, and that's not just ancient Egypt, that's like even any of the ancient structures in the yeah, world and the mind and, or the level of consciousness that conceived of them and mm -hmm. brought them into manifestation. Mm -hmm. To understand that, you can't try to understand that mind. You can't try to understand the psychology, mm -hmm. the philosophy mm -hmm. of of the ancient mind. Yeah. Um, using your modern day 3D mind. Yeah. You, you won't understand it. Mm -hmm. And as a result, what you have is Egyptologists and archaeologists and just lay people as well, mm -hmm. trying to understand the temples and the pyramids and... And even, for example, the sites in Ireland, the mounds and the circles and all over the ancient world. Yeah. And the glyphs, the hieroglyphs and symbols mm -hmm. that are carved into the walls. And you have people, archaeologists, either to academics, trying to understand it with their 3D modern logical mind. Yeah. They'll never understand it. No, yeah. Because it's a completely, you have to make a quantum leap in your consciousness to understand the ancient mind. The ancient mind was not a 3D mind. Yes. It didn't work the way our mind worked so they communicated their concepts their knowledge their information in the form of symbols yeah and a symbol can contain literally what what would take libraries yeah of, it's of like a book books Pictures to write a thousand words, right? exactly a whole library could be contained in, in one symbol, symbol. Mm -hmm. so just to get that basis of, of how important the symbols actually are. And until you understand that what has been carved on the walls in ancient mm -hmm. Egypt is nothing to do with pharaohs offering other pharaohs incense and whatever they tell you. <laughs> Offerings. It's and... nothing to do with battles of pharaohs against other pharaohs who they're fighting against for mm -hmm. land and all this type of thing. Or I think, that, you know, people saying like it means this letter or this letter. No, the alphabet. I no. Think, I so there's so 700 simple. and something. It's very simple, yeah. very simplistic interpretation. Yeah. yeah. Between, we'll say, because they don't really know, but I think the, the, the last number I encountered was approximately 700, maybe. Mm -hmm. Known hieroglyphs. Yeah. And um, there's only 26 mm -hmm. letters in the alphabet, so it couldn't represent a letter. No. Yeah, exactly. Even Champollion himself knew that. Yeah. That it couldn't possibly have represented a letter. Oh, no, yeah. So... Unless and until you're capable of making a quantum leap mm -hmm. in your mind, in your consciousness and in your own way of thinking, mm -hmm. out of your modern day 3D mind yeah. and into the ancient mind, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Now, it's not an ancient mind. I'm just saying it in that way yeah. of those of the people who did that um, and begin to understand their language, mm -hmm. which was a language of symbols, Yeah. not the language we're familiar with. No, yeah. It's a language of symbols. So... Until you can actually make that shift, you're not going to understand yeah. what any of ancient Egypt is about. No. So, uh, uh, the Osarian Temple and Abydos itself, as I said, reflected in the system of the human body, it reflected the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. And in each area, um, and I mentioned this before, in each area, the lessons associated with each chakra mm -hmm. would be taught. On the east bank of the Nile, on the west bank of the Nile, representing because each chakra will have its feminine energy and its yeah, masculine so it'll be energy. The male yeah, and female, whatever side of the Nile it's on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, the initiate, the student, would would um, work on those energies yeah. in the male energy and the female energy in the temples, mm -hmm. and they move up along the Nile as they mm. progress. So my center, the Flower Light Center, is in Luxor, and in terms of this system we're talking about, mm -hmm. 
looks or represents the solar plexus, mm. which is your third chakra. Mm-hmm. Or your, um, it's kind of around your belly button area, yeah. your navel. Mm-hmm. Not, you, yeah, R- above, uh, above your navel. Yeah. So it's your solar chakra. In other words, it's your sun chakra. It's your power center. Yeah, your inner sun. It's where you output your energy into the world. Yeah. You do it from that place. Yeah. And is, it, is that the one, uh, the lower three are the ones that are the 3D ones? like? Well, yeah. I mean, they're the ones that are necessary for laying the foundation yeah. of your to your, rise above. your third dimensional yeah. physical existence yes. mm-hmm. because your root chakra is to do with survival yeah yeah it's to do with surviving in the 3d world how do i clothe myself how do i feed myself how do i feed my yeah. um family how do i you know in more modern day how do i get a job how do i yeah. you know mm-hmm. um your sacral chakra which is your second chakra is all about reproducing yourself mm-hmm. it's about sexual energy and reproduction mm-hmm. your third chakra as you know is your solar plexus and it's all about how you you project your power into the world yeah um your heart chakra as as we know is about your the intelligence of the heart mm-hmm. which yeah. is the higher self mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your throat chakra i'm only going through these very quickly yeah your throat chakra is about speaking that truth that you found in the heart mm-hmm. out into the world yeah manifesting it because in the beginning was the word right and the word became manifest mm-hmm. the word became matter mm-hmm. Um, and then you go to your um, t- your third eye chakra, mm-hmm. which is your uh, psychic vision, mm-hmm. if you like. And connected to your endocrine system. Your pineal gland. Mm-hmm. Um, your third eye, as they say, well, your pineal gland is a combination of three different glands mm-hmm. working in syn- synchronicity with each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what's called opening the third eye. Mm-hmm. And that's allowing you to have communication with your higher self mm-hmm. and to receive information from higher dimensional levels rather than just the third dimension. Mm-hmm. And then you have your crown chakra, which is the gateway or the portal mm-hmm. through which you move out of the third dimension yep. and into the higher realms. Mm-hmm. So that's just a quick... So I just wanted you to know where you were in Abydos, yeah. which is in the heart. Mm-hmm. So it makes more sense of why the flower life symbol was found there. Of course. And yeah. the mythology that I'm going to go through and tell you so, is associated with the temple so from Luxor Abydos is above it yes, yes. yeah like yeah. more like northern or? yeah that's a good question Charlotte um so when we go from Luxor to Abydos mm-hmm. on our journey yeah when we're doing our journeys in Egypt and we move from Luxor to Abydos what we're doing is we're making the quantum leap mm-hmm. from the third dimension yeah to the fourth dimension and on yeah which is your heart chakra so we're going, we're doing, making the physical movement mm-hmm. and we go from Luxor to Abydos. Mm-hmm. And we understand what we're doing as we go because don't forget we're tracing the path of the mystery school and initiate. Yes. So we're literally going into the temples. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm telling you the information. You're picking up your own information, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we move on to the next, you know, and you will process those yeah. lessons that you've learned. And, yeah. and when you go into the temples... Like Antoinette was saying, remember you're you're an initiate, so you probably already know this. So when you physically go into the temple, you're triggering like a not an awakening, but a muscle activation. Memory. A memory. That's a very good point, Christine. <laughs> a memory, yeah. an activation, yeah. and you can have you can go back to your country, and you'll it might take weeks. It could be instantaneously, and though these things will open up to you. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fact that those who are going on journeys like that mm-hmm. are already people who are very Clued very in. fully remembered yes exactly and so when they do they may not think they are but the fact that they're actually going on a journey shows you know yeah. and when you walk into a site and it doesn't again it doesn't have to be in egypt it can be a, an ancient site anywhere around the world but yeah. because that's what these sites are for yes mm-hmm. they're gateways to the, ne- the, the next dimensional level yeah. mm-hmm. they're gateways between the third dimension and the next dimension that's it. so they resonate in both dimensions mm. oh, you know yeah. So the, you have the Hall of Records, which exists below, and you have then the Ethereal Temple, which exists above every temple. So every temple mm-hmm. is in three levels. It has one below, a physical temple below. It's called the Hall of Records. Yeah. It has the actual temple that you see, mm-hmm. that you walk 3D. into. Yep. Yeah. And then it has an Ethereal or energetic temple that exists, yeah. that you then, as an initiate, move into. Mm-hmm. So you can experience that Ethereal yeah, energetic yeah. temple. The Great Pyramid, the physical pyramid, there's an energetic pyramid that's in the mirror image. So where the top of the pyramid is, the energetic the apex. pyramid is touching 
that mm-hmm. as well. Exactly. No, the two, yeah, so it makes yeah. a kind of an X shape if you yes. think of it that yeah, way. Yeah. Um, so back to, to Abydos anyway. Yes. Um, so, um, so you, if you can think of that movement between uh, the solar plexus and the heart chakra. Yeah. So while you're making that physical movement, mm-hmm. you're also making the internal movement as well. Mm-hmm. So you're making a quantum shift. Yeah. From your solar plexus to your heart. Mm-hmm. Now, in other podcasts, I've talked about the book of Coming Forth by Light, which is what is carved into all the walls and what's painted on all the tomb walls. And in the fifth division of the book, or the fifth phase, or the fifth step, whatever way you want to look at it, because it's measured, if you remember, in 12. Mm-hmm. In 12 steps, remember? The book mm-hmm. Coming Forth by Light. Yeah. It's measured in 12 steps. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. And so you have to go through these 12 steps. Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So compare it to what we were talking about here. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you have to go through those 12 steps mm-hmm. to enter the land of... The Duat. The immortal. Well, yeah. the immortal. Yeah. The duat is, the, is you would say, well, kind of a almost between. a journey. Yeah. yeah it's, the, it's the in-between. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's always discussion and confusion about the duat and the land of the Neater and are they separate things? And, you know, obviously they're not. But the duat is almost like the journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That the person goes on to get to the land of the immortal. Yeah, you know, so they journey we, through the duat. Yeah. If you can think of this, this is the way the Egyptians considered, the ancient Egyptian considered the duat. Mm-hmm. You know, Which, the sun, when the sun rises in the morning? Yes. Yes. So you can see it all day mm-hmm. until it sets. That's it. And then it's gone away from your view. So in their comparative psychology, so they, mm-hmm. they had a, a psychology where they compared things to their own life, if you want to put yeah. it that way. So they looked at the sun and they saw the sun disappearing from their view. Mm-hmm. So they compared that to death. Mm-hmm. And so the sun set in the west. If you're in Egypt, the sun will set over on the west bank of the Nile. Yeah. So in the ancient Egyptian philosophy, the west bank of the Nile was the Duat. Mm. Yeah. The valley of the... Yeah. yeah. The west bank of the Nile and all the temples on the west bank of the Nile. Which was like the underworld, right? The exactly. Duat, the was the Duat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they envisioned the Duat as like a death, even though they had no concept of death. And I'll tell you why, you'll understand. Yeah. They didn't have a concept of death. Mm-hmm. So they didn't have a word called death. They didn't, yeah. No. So the sun set... Now think of the character Set. Yes. Set is the one who became Satan, I want to tell you. That's right, yeah. In religion. Oh, okay. So yeah, makes sense. for those people who might not know, S-E-T. there's um, a, a god in the pantheon of gods in ancient Egypt called Set. S-E-T. And Set is who was turned into Satan in religious terms. Yeah. In, in the Book of Coming Forth by Light, Set represents any obstacle on your path. That's what set represents. Mm -hmm. It represents an obstacle that you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. And once you overcome that obstacle, you are stronger, you are better, and you can move on your path. Mm -hmm. Set is not anything negative or evil, and it's certainly not anything to do with Satan in the real information. Mm -hmm. So the sun sets, okay? And when it does, where does it go? So to, to the ancient mind who saw everything in comparison to everything else, Mm hmm we don't know, as I said. Yeah. We have to make that shift in our mind. Mm. So as they watched the sun set, they contemplated the nature of their own mortality and they saw that the sun setting was very much like them dying, leaving yeah, their body, yeah. leaving their body. Because when people leave their body, in other words, when they do what we call die, mm-hmm. we don't know where to go, do we? No, yeah. You know? So they saw the sun going through the hours of the night when they couldn't see it. Yeah. But what did it do? It came back the next morning. Mm-hmm. It was resurrected. It was born again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> from from seeing that, they were able to deduce, and this was why the ratios mm-hmm. in the geometry is really important. Because what the ratios in the geometry allow you to do, what I explained before about one net r- r- Russian doll inside another. Yes. What it allows you to do is reason from the known to the unknown. So you can say, if the sun sets every night, Mm -hmm. goes through this unknown passage that I don't know what happens, Mm -hmm. but it comes back every morning. So you can know everything does that. Everything is in cycles. Mm. So they knew because the sun set and rose every morning. That's exactly what they did as well. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was simple. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've lost sight of all that, you know. Yes. Ooh. So the whole idea of it was a sacred act. Mm. We don't think nothing of the sun rising and setting. No, because we get up in the morning, has... rush out to work, rush out to school, rush out to college, mm-hmm. whatever we need to do. Um, we're not thinking about anything. That's what I mean. You have to make a complete shift. The sun rising, the sun setting, were sacred acts. The sun moving across the sky. The yeah. sun at different times during the day had yeah. different names and yes. different phases and different qualities of energy, as you do. To the Egyptians? Yeah. yeah. They mm-hmm. had a name for the rising sun. They had sun, a name for the rising the sun, sun, the midday sun, the evening sun, mm-hmm. the noon sun, mm-hmm. the setting sun. Yeah. They had different names. Mm. Amun was the setting sun. Mm. Amun was the one, who, the unknown, the one that went into the dark. The hidden one. Yeah. The hidden one. Exactly. And you can compare that to your life. Mm. But you can also compare it to one day in your life. Yeah. So when the sun rises, that's you getting up in the morning. Yeah. As the sun goes through the day, it gets, doesn't it get weaker as it goes to the evening? Mm-hmm. From our perspective, the sun doesn't seem to be as bright. No, yeah. So in the evening, you're tired and you need to go to bed. Mm-hmm. So in that level as well, the ancient Egyptians compared one day. I don't mean the ancient Egyptian. I should really say the ancient mind. The ancient mind. Yeah. I mean all ancient minds that, mm-hmm. that all thinking. Yeah. So one day they compared their entire life. Mm-hmm. So getting up in the morning is like being born. And when you go to sleep at night, it's like the ultimate death. Yeah. But don't forget, you always wake up the next morning. That's it. You see? And that's how they reasoned. Yeah. There is no death. Yeah. That's how they knew. From a logical perspective. Yeah. So then they had to set about knowing it from a direct experience perspective. Mm-hmm. Now, there's only one way to do that. Oh, that's to die and come back? Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that brings us to what the modern version of the ancient Egyptian mysteries is. Yeah. And the modern version of an ancient Egyptian mystery is a near-death experience. Mm-hmm. And very, in all cases, I would imagine, you know, in the modern world, um, it happens accidentally. And I don't mean that it happens to be in an accident. People can have a near-death experience if they're sick. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Or whatever. They don't have to be in an actual accident. Yes. But what I mean is they didn't do it on purpose themselves. No. They didn't do the great work to, yeah. you know, it just happened. master initiate. Yeah. Or you... yeah. And the same with me. Same with me. Yeah. I had a death experience that happened because of an accident. Mm-hmm. I cannot claim, you know. Yeah. Even though, um, obviously, I have done this work. Yeah, of course. You know. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't consciously do the work in this lifetime. Not to, in this lifetime. For no. that to happen. It was an know? accident that caused the whole thing. And that is what, how it's, it's happening. Yeah. And this is an awakening, actually. The near-death experiences, as they call them, I say death experiences, but these experiences that people are having all over the world, if you look back even 50, 60 years ago, there's not that many accounts. Now, people might say because the internet and everything. Well, actually, is it that? Or is it that there actually wasn't that many Mm. accounts of it? I think think it's more... But there's an explosion of people having those experiences. Is that a quantum leap now? Is that the new mystery? Is that the mysteries coming back? Mm. Yeah, it could be. To our consciousness? Yeah, I'd say so. Is this the awakening of the energy well, in the, the Aquarian age as it's meant to happen? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because it's unity consciousness, you know? which means when one person has and everyone does. We exactly. all know it at the same time. So I'm just going to quickly tell you um, the Seti First Temple in mm-hmm. Abydos and what the temple itself, because each temple is dedicated to something different. Mm-hmm. So what the temple itself is dedicated to. So what a talk, in other words, what's carved on the walls. Yeah. So what's carved on the walls in the Seti First Temple is the story of Isis, Osiris, and Horus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the story of how um, Osiris was chopped into fourteen pieces. Mm-hmm. Now, this is kind of a complicated story, so I'm just going to make it really easy. The pantheon of gods, we discussed it in another podcast. The, they were called uh, the Inead, the Nine, the Nine yeah. Gods. Yeah. So those nine were Atom, Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut. Osiris, Isis, Nephthys, and Seth. And um, Osiris and Isis were husband and wife, if you like. Mm-hmm. And the story is told of how Osiris's brother Seth tricked him into getting into what we'll just say for this podcast sake is was a coffin. So he tricked him into getting into a box, which eventually became Osiris's coffin, if you like. So his brother Seth, Osiris, Isis, Nephthys, Seth, they say they were brothers, sisters, husbands and wives. So Osiris and Isis were husband and wife, Nephthys and Seth were yeah. husband and wife. Mm. Um, Isis and Nephthys were both sisters. And they're represented in the Book of the Dead as two serpents. That's right. Isis and Nephthys, wisdom and intellect. Mm, okay. Um, so... <clears throat> um, the story is told of how 
Osiris's brother Set okay. tricked Osiris into getting into a coffin. And what he did was, it's this is the numbers in this story are important, mm-hmm. and any st- mythology that you hear, if there's numbers in it, the numbers are does everything is important in it, but the numbers always will relate to yeah. to something that'll be important. They're not abstract, is what I mean. Mm, yeah. So in the story of Osiris, um, Set got seventy two conspirators mm. to um, conspire against Osiris. So they had a party with all the 72 people there and invited Osiris. And they pretended that th- this was like a party game. And whoever could fit into the box would win a treasure. Mm. So they all pretended to try to fit into the box. But everybody at this so-called party knew that the only person that the box fit was Osiris. Yeah. They all knew that, except he had Osiris. It made only to fit him. Yeah. So Seth had it made only to fit perfectly Osiris. Mm-hmm. So everybody knew that it was for him. Mm-hmm. So the minute Osiris got in, they all rushed around the box, put the lid on, nailed it shut, <laughs> and sealed it oh, no. with wax and whatever they sealed it. You know, they could mm-hmm. seal it with. I think it's yeah. Well, anyway, whatever they sealed, they sealed it shut. Yeah. And Osiris was buried in the desert, mm-hmm. in the coffin. Mm-hmm. So Isis then realises her husband's missing mm. and doesn't, you know, is looking for him and is upset. And so eventually in the, in the story anyway, she finds him in the desert. Mm-hmm. And um, Seth discovers that she has found the body of Osiris. She finds him and opens the, the box. Her and her sister Nephethys go looking for him. Yeah. And they find him out in the desert in the, in the box and they open the box. But Seth hears about it. And Set comes rushing and is, you know, totally angry that they're after finding this box. Mm -hmm. So he takes Osiris and he chops his body up into 14 pieces. And he buries the 14 pieces up and down the whole length and breadth of Egypt Mm -hmm. along the Nile. Sorry, I tell a lie. He buried 13 pieces. Oh, 13. Okay. And the 14th piece he threw into the River Nile. Hmm. The 14th piece of Osiris that was thrown into the River Nile was his penis. Mm -hmm. And in the mythology, it says that his penis was eaten by a fish. That's right. Mm. Okay. Now, I'll just give you a little clue here. What's the symbol of Jesus? Only a fish. (laughs) So there's there's other anyway. But um, so it's all this is all um, symbolic. Yeah, it's all symbolic. Um, So. You have to read in between the lines of all these things, you know. So so Isis and Osiris set about trying to find all 14 pieces of... Isis and Osiris? Or, or sorry, Isis, Isis, Isis and Nephthys. Sorry. sorry, thanks, yeah. Charlotte. <laughs> Isis and Nephthys yeah. set about trying to find all of the 14 pieces of, mm-hmm. um, Osiris. of Osiris. Mm-hmm. So both Isis and Nephthys... Um, now, this story kind of goes a bit longer, right? The box was thrown into the River Nile and it floated up the... Mm-hmm. Uh, okay before he got shot he, yeah, he, yeah. there's a whole other part of this story where the, where he's thrown into the river Nile mm-hmm. and the box floats up into a place Lebanon. called Bibelos which is Lebanon yeah. mm-hmm. and the, the the box itself gets stuck it floats up the Nile and gets or into Bibelos and mm-hmm. gets stuck in the trunk of a tree yeah and one day the tree. king of Bibelos which is modern day Lebanon mm-hmm. is out hunting and he sees this tree with the box stuck in it and he goes oh that's beautiful I'm chopping this down and I'm bringing it back and erecting it as a pillar in my temple mm. so he brings it back to his temple and erects it as a pillar meanwhile Isis and, Osi- and Nephethys her sister mm-hmm. are still looking for Osiris mm-hmm. so they um, fly around they turn themselves into birds mm. and they fly around and they fly to Bibelos mm. and they can turn themselves back into humans again mm. and they turn themselves back into humans and they speak to some children there and the children tell them about the pillar where the pillar is in the, in the, in the. so um, Isis goes to the temple and ingratiates herself into the king into his wife mm. and becomes um, a nursemaid for the king's child mm-hmm. and at night time she turns herself back into the bird and flies around and tries to find mm-hmm. Osiris yeah. so this is another part of the story where how she found, finds him a second time yeah 
And so it's after this time. Sorry, I skipped out that whole bit, but I was trying to make the story a bit faster. Because supposedly mm-hmm. the tree was the cedars of Lebanon, so it, yeah. the box was inside a cedar tree. Yeah, it's also got to do with the crucifixion of... important for Egyptian cedar wood shows up in other places. Oh, Cyrus in the tree is also related to Jesus Jeez. and the crucifix. But anyway, mm-hmm. so... Um, but then when he gets cut up and... Yeah, so mm-hmm. after this, she okay. finds the body. Seth yeah. just realises that her and Isis are after finding... Yeah. Um, Osiris' body so he's really angry he comes back and he goes right this time she'll never find yeah. him so he chops up into 14 pieces buries 13 of them up and down along the Nile yeah. and throws the 14th in to mm-hmm. the Nile which is his penis mm-hmm. and the fish eats it mm-hmm. so Isis and Nephethys again turn themselves into birds fly up and down along the Nile until they find all the pieces mm-hmm. so they find all 13 pieces and they they um put them all back together, except they couldn't find the penis because it'd been eaten by the fish. Mm -hmm. So the head of Osiris was found in Abydos. That's right. Oh, okay. So Abydos was famous for the head of Osiris. Yeah. Be buried there. That's one thing. The other thing is, when they found all the pieces Mm -hmm. of Osiris, Isis and Nephethys brought all the pieces of Osiris back to Abydos, where his head was. Mm -hmm. And they set about putting... Osiris back together. Resurrecting him. Mm -hmm. Putting him back together. Yeah. So what they did was they put all his pieces back together and wrapped them Mm. in in bandages Bandages. or... or Mummy wrappings. Or linen, Mm -hmm. cotton. Mm -hmm. And Osiris became the first mummy. Mm. So it was the act of Isis and Nephethys remembering... Mm-hmm. And to remember something means to put it back together. Yeah. <laughs> put the members back together. When you dismember something, yeah, you take, you it, take apart. it apart. To remember. When you remember something, you put those previously separated pieces back together again. Ah, uh, yes. Like solving a puzzle. Yeah, yeah. remember. So Isis and Osiris remembered. Uh, sorry, Isis and Nephethys mm-hmm. remembered Osiris. Yeah. At Abydos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They in put the him, Osirian, behind the study of the first. They, yes, it's they put ancient. all his pieces back together, mm-hmm. yep. including the head, which was buried in Abydos, mm-hmm. and wrapped them in mummy, in bandages or linen. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, that's where the first mummy yes. happened. First resurrection. But don't forget, he don't forget, have. he didn't have his mm-hmm. golden member. His penis. Now, here comes the second part of... Mm-hmm. The, the kind of mythology of this story. And again, yes. you've got to read between the lines and understand where it's coming from. So... And this is what's on the walls in the temple. Mm. And so Isis wanted to have a child mm-hmm. with Osiris. Yeah. But because this part was missing, yeah. she couldn't. No. So she called on the magic of Toth. Now, we, we spoke about Toth before. She called on the magic of Toth and she asked Toth to help her mm-hmm. conceive a child. Mm-hmm. And this conception was a conception not like a conception we're, we're used to, you know. Mm-hmm. It was conception without any sexual intercourse. Right. Mm-hmm. There couldn't be because he had no penis. No, yeah. So. so she called on the magic of Toth. And Toth came and helped her by creating a magical penis. Mm-hmm. And first he created one out of mud. Then he created one out of wood. Then he created one in gold. And when he created the one in gold, Isis turned herself again into a bird. Mm-hmm. and hovered over the body of Osiris. And in that way, she conceived the child Horus. Mm. Uh, yes. The Immaculate Conception. So yes. this is what became, of course, the Immaculate Conception. Uh-huh. Angel wings. <laughs> yeah. Bird wings. That's now, Flavos. there was a festival that was, that originated from the whole idea of Isis and Nephethys putting the body of Osiris back together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this was to do with with making bread. So what they used to do was they would make um, a bread man. (laughs) A man out of bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To commemorate Osiris being Osiris being being put back together Mm -hmm. or being remembered. And they would make a bread man cake. And that was to Mm symbolise the idea of Osiris's body. Yeah. Being put back together. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a and they would the eat mold. that bread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were a mold, and they were like puzzle pieces of the yeah. body. Because yeah. I've seen it. It's mm-hmm. really interesting. And that's what became communion. <sighs> yes. Exactly. You know the yeah, bread. Yeah, and yeah. Communion in the church. Body bread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Still carrying that ritual out. Yeah. 
-hmm. So, as you can see, that story contained in that temple yes. is talking about many different things there. Now, you can read into all that symbology if, when you're listening to the, the podcast. You'll, mm -hmm. You can listen back to that story. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure each time you listen, you'll probably hear something. Yeah, something different. That'll trigger, yeah. you know, some kind of thinking. Yeah. Um. So, it's telling the story of how somebody was literally separated. Mm -hmm. The pieces of a unified being, if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. was separated and literally scattered all over the place. But then was put back together. Mm -hmm. And even put back together, but even more than put back together, was able to reproduce. Yeah, exactly. But not in the conventional no. way that we consider. So we're talking about the Immaculate Conception. Yes. And we're talking about the remembering mm -hmm. of your scattered pieces. Yeah, like Lazarus, mm. resurrection. Osiris is Lazarus. That's what I thought, yeah. Um, in the Bible, you know, the raising, remember Jesus in the Bible mm -hmm. raised Lazarus. Lazarus was dead and Jesus raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Well, Lazarus is the Bible name for Osiris. It's the mm -hmm. same story. Mm. So the raising of Osiris is what happened in Abydos. Okay, so this is another important thing that happened in Abydos. Yeah. So we had Osiris being put back together, mm -hmm. the conception of the divine child, mm -hmm. and the raising of Osiris. Mm -hmm. So what do we mean the raising of Osiris? Yeah. The bringing back to life mm -hmm. after he had been killed. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing a dead body back to life. Would that have anything to do with raising the Jed pillar, which is on yes. the walls in, in the Seti the First Temple? Yeah. Good point, Christine. So in Seti First Temple, mm -hmm. and that was another important festival, even in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all these festivals I'm talking about, the ancient people continued these festivals on to keep this information alive. Yes. yes. And they would make pilgrimages to Abydos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Abydos was one of the most ancient and sacred places, apart from yeah. the Giza Plateau, mm -hmm. yeah. to the ancient people of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's it. And they would make pilgrimage to this place and reenact these things yeah, like making the bread yeah putting them together eating the bread you know mm -hmm. and that would be exactly like preserving preserving the knowledge and um in continuum you know like so it's like the oral uh, that's history. how all this information yeah. is it's, it's, it's either walls, in symbol and act this it's why people do holidays today like they don't even know why they do them mm. but they do them mm. yeah. but all this information has to be left in symbol form because it's it doesn't it's a symbol represents something it represents itself, but something other than itself. A symbol always represents something else. Mm -hmm. And it represents... A symbol is something that is visible to you in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's containing information that's, that's coming from yeah. a higher dimension. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it can't be translated or disseminated to mm -hmm. you in the lang in this language. Yes. Because it, it, there is no words. Mm -hmm. there, it, it doesn't have... The, it can't be communicated in language. Yeah, you yeah. can't process it with a 3D mind. It's the quantum leap, right? Exactly. And you've got to make a shift into, into the mind that understands symbols. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is your right brain. Because you won't understand this with your logical mind. Your logical yeah. mind is your ego. Exactly. You will not understand this information with your ego. That's what I would say. That's... I see throngs of people going to Egypt. Yeah. And they're going and looking through their ego. Yes. They're never going to see. They're never going to understand. They're mm -hmm. never going to have any idea what this is about. It's through your, your female energy. As an artist, I teach kids to go, drop into their right brain, which sees colors, forms, you know, and it's never asleep. It's always awake. To me, that's your female energy. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're not, you can't process it analytically because it's not meant to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So all of this in plain language was basically what people have in the modern day world. And I spoke of this at the beginning is death experiences or what we call near death experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I've just been discussing on what's written in this temple mm -hmm. is just that. It's the coming back to life yeah. of somebody who has died. Now, people call them in the modern day world near death. And I've said this before. It's not near death. It's death. <laughs> it's death. <laughs> like you go through the process mm -hmm. yeah. of leaving your body. Yeah. You know, and coming back into your body. Yeah. And been able to tell other people what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you just listen to modern day examples of people's near death experience, every person that comes back from a near death experience will say, bar I'm sure maybe one or two. Yeah. And there are people maybe who, who didn't fully understand the experience, but everybody who comes back says pretty much the same things. Mm -hmm. It has changed their life forever. Yeah. 
they will never be the same. Mm-hmm. And they understand everything is one. Mm-hmm. So, if you consider that Osiris was was considered in the in the ancient world as the the lord or the king or the kin really is where the word comes from there's mm-hmm. no such word as king we we that's a modern day invention mm-hmm. the word is based on the word kin k i n kin yeah okay. and your kin is your mother your brother your sister yeah so we're talking about more of a shamanic type of way that they would have elders of their tribes yeah mm-hmm. you know yeah. osiris is considered a god i understand that but he was also considered a kin Mm-hmm. You know, so in a shamanic way, the elder of the tribe, if you yeah. like. Yes. Yeah, the wise right. one, if you know what mm-hmm. I mean. But Osiris also represented every person, as I said at the beginning of this, every person in physical manifest, whether you're man, woman or child. Okay, so consider the Seti First Temple is telling all this information, right? Mm-hmm. And what I said to you was that just outside the Seti First Temple and below the temple is the Osirian Temple, yeah. which is a separate structure and it's much older. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Osirian I mean, temple. really, when you look at it, it really compares for me to the um, Sphinx Valley Sphinx, Temple, yeah. which I'm sure there's other things that Sphinx haven't temple. been discovered, mm. but the ones in South America that have the yeah. amazing, like... Stones almost molded together. Jeez, yeah. the, the, and so perfectly yeah. done. It's like the, the stones have been molded together. There's no mm. yeah, it evidence doesn't, like, of... anyone being able to make that with yeah, a tool. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And the columns in this temple, there's no hieroglyphs on the walls. Nope. And the columns, no. th- there's solid granite uh, yeah. columns. Um, and one of the mysteries, I suppose, as well, which is one of the lesser mysteries as far as I'm concerned, is how the symbol actually got on the column. Yeah. Because it's not carved into the column. And when I say, I mean the symbol of the flower of life. Um, and it's carved on one of the granite columns in the Osirian temple, which is the, the much older temple. And I did talk about this temple before, and I mentioned that Flinders Petrie excavated it in the early 1900s. Yeah. And he only got halfway down of the excavation of this temple because it was below ground. It was covered. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it even seen. Is. He just obviously knew that there was something there and began to dig and discovered it. But he dated it by by um, measuring the the strata of the um, layers of silt that had been laid down by the overflow of the Nile mm. over thousands of years. Wow. And so he, he measured, um, counted, you know, and How it's not, it's not a, layers, an amazingly yeah. accurate way to do it, but he counted the layers, exactly. Um, and the Nile overflowed every so often, so he counted the layers and multiplied the time, and, and mm-hmm. that's how he managed to... Wow, great. And I'm sure he applied other methods as well, not just that. Mm-hmm. But he basically said that the, the temple, in his estimation, would have been about 18,000 years old. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he only got halfway down. I know. Yeah. Um, um, so, I mean, Flinders Petrie was very active, and he's the one who uh, discovered the temple of Hathor on top of Cerebel El Kadim, and I spoke about that. Oh, in look another, at all that white powder on the ground. Mm-hmm. In another podcast, yeah. But, um, so the Osirian temple is where the flare of life symbol is found. And if you Google the Osirian temple and flare of life, you'll see images of where it is on the granite column. But when you go to that temple, the Osirian temple is always flooded with water. Yeah. There's always water on the ground, so you can never actually, there's a ladder that you get down into it. There's no roof on this temple or anything. Um, so there's a ladder that you can climb down, but you're not allowed to climb down into it because, first of all, they don't want you down there. But there's always water in it. Mm. That's partly the reason why there's always water. They leave in the it, water in because yeah. they don't want you. But um, but occasionally, if you're there long enough, um, it it does dry out sometimes. Yeah. They do let the water out sometimes. Um, and so I was there on a number of occasions when I could actually get down into the Osirian itself. And when you do what you realise is, and what most people only ever see, mm-hmm. is the two Flower of Life symbols, completed symbols. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the side of the... On pillars. the column, as you see them from the ladder. From above, yeah. Because you can't get down any further. But if you get down into the temple and you go around the back of that column, mm-hmm. you'll see that the Flower of Life symbol actually starts off from one circle to two circles to three circles to four circles, mm-hmm. and it's all on the back mm-hmm. of that column. Just like the sacred geometry. And when you come around the front of the column, then there's two fully formed... Fully formed symbols but the point is first of all you've drawn those symbols and you know you have to be very accurate to draw that symbol oh, yeah. so to try and draw that on granite mm. you know it's not carved into the stone it's not drawn on by any <laughs> kind of paint or anything like that so the only thing that it seems to be is like it's almost like burnt on yeah mm. you know so that in itself is a mystery of how that symbol 
actually got on there. Wow. But the symbol itself contains all the information about the atomic weight of all substances on the periodic table. Wow. Or all elements, should I say. Wow. So what I'm trying to say is that the flare of life symbol contains the geometry, the geometric shape of all matter in the physical universe. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's the blueprint. Yeah. Now, I know I've mentioned that loads of times. <laughs> and it does take a long time to understand why geometry connects with any of this. I know it does because people, I see, you know, sometimes it's difficult to understand mm -hmm. what g shapes has to do with, what geometry has to do with, what numbers has to do with this. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But if you can shift your mind into thinking that that is the language that these people understood. Yeah. Not any form of language that we're it's, talking about now. It's a very scientific way of thinking. It's a, exactly it is. Mm -hmm. And also I think they were... It's alchemy. Yeah. yeah. They're alchemists. It's where Absolutely. the science has come from. That's it, yeah. Alchem, chemistry. That's it. Physics, biology, you know, it all comes from alchemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, the ancients had um, a holistic science. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is, today we have religion is separate. Yeah. To they've been disconnected. To art, art is separate to religion. Spiritual art and religion are separate to science. Mm -hmm. Science and the sciences are separated. Mm -hmm. You've got chemistry, you've got physics, you've got biology, and quite often they don't inter. People working on those particular things don't interconnect. Oh, no. They're, yeah. uh, they're compartmentalized. They do, science is so rigid after the, hmm, what I used to admire, but now I don't, the Age of Enlightenment, it was distinctly, by people who were parts of these mystery schools, you know, uh, oh, yeah. disconnected on yeah. purpose. Yeah. Mm. So what they basically did in the modern world by... Because they meant to, or, or by accident, it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah. The result is the same. The result, exactly. The result. What they did was they took a holistic concept, holistic philosophy, which is what the ancient people knew. Okay? The mm -hmm. ancient Atlanteans, we'll call them. Yes. Okay? What they knew. And that's what the Egyptian civilization is based on, all that knowledge, and our own ancient Irish civilization, and all the ancient civilizations. Mm -hmm. So they took that holistic knowledge. And that when I say holistic, I mean there was no separation between yeah. science and God. Or what we might call religion. Yeah, they were connected. So the idea of science was an exploration of the universe. Mm -hmm. It was nothing to do with, like, actually, we've separated religion from science and almost like they have nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. But in the ancient mind, art, religion, science, there was no religion. There was, everything was sacred, like I described, the sun rising and setting. Mm -hmm. It was sacred because they saw it as themselves being born mm -hmm. and leaving this body and coming back so the whole science that was that's told in seti first temple mm -hmm. and seti first temple was built in the location it was built in because seti knew the osirian was already there yeah when he built his ancient mm -hmm. temple right so um the knowledge that's in that temple is basically of how we incarnate and reincarnate hmm. so it's about how we come into this world and we think, okay, this is it. This is the only life I ever, ever had. Mm -hmm. There's nothing before, there's nothing after, you know. Mm -hmm. But in, that's not how the ancient mind saw it. Mm -hmm. They knew that there was the cycle, a continuity, it was a cycle. Yeah, it's, it's a cycle. And so the path of the mystery school initiate, ultimately, was to have what was known as continuity of memory. Because the only difference between somebody who was mortal, physical, who was born, lived, and died, and somebody who was immortal, mm -hmm. who was ageless, timeless, and omnidimensional. Mm -hmm. And there's only one difference between those two, and that's memory. Mm -hmm. And an immortal yeah. was somebody who could remember, who remembered that they lived in this life before, that they did this before, that they had this before. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to mm -hmm. incarnate reincarnate reincarnate so that you experienced everything in the third dimension mm -hmm. you experienced being a woman being a man being a child being a mother being a father being a brother being a sister mm -hmm. you experienced being an animal being mm -hmm. a dog being being um a bird being a cloud being, a, being mountain. a cloud being water being grass being the trees being flowers you've got to be everything because you are everything mm. Everything's you. Mm -hmm. So if you understand that when you look at, and, and this is how the ancient mind would look at it. So you can understand how they had a very different view of things. An ancient mind would look at a tree 
and would never dream of doing anything other than being so grateful, so mm. loving, so appreciative of that tree. Because mm. you know what they knew? They knew that that, was, that tree is me in evolution. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Because once you were a tree, once you were a blade of glass, a blade of grass, once you were a flower, you've been all those things. Yeah. And the culmination of your evolution is our human form. Mm. So if you look at the, the temples in Egypt, for example, and you see on the walls the way, and this has been a mystery to kind of a lot of academics over the years, the way they portray the gods as having bird heads. Mm. Yes. Or dog heads. Yeah. Or half an animal body and half a human. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if you consider what I've just said. Yeah. They were ancient shamans. And they understood that they also, at one point in their cycle of incarnation and reincarnation, mm -hmm. they were also a tree. So they know that that tree will one day be human. Mm, exactly. They know that that rock will one day be human. Because it's not just everything in the natural world, even inanimate things that we think of, like that we make in the modern day world, man-made things. Those man-made things are made out of natural substances that are formed on the earth. Mm. The earth is a living being. So all Absolutely. those substances, just because they've been configured to be an iPhone, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those laptop. substances all exist on the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even man-made things, because yeah. they have to take them from the earth. There's yeah, nowhere exactly. else to take yeah, them from, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know? So even though they've been configured into what we might call technology, yeah. this all arose from the earth, from nature. Mm -hmm. And what is nature? Nature is the neater. That's right, mm. the neater. And the neater as what the Egyptologists thought meant the gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. But the word neater in the ancient Egyptian language as it was written all over the walls and everywhere else yeah. did not mean gods and goddesses. Yeah. It meant nature. That's right, nature, yeah. So you think about that now. What were they? What what did they know? They knew that all of nature mm -hmm. was consciousness evolving. That's it. Yeah, their consciousness, mm. their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their fathers. Ultimately, we're all one. That's right. Mm. But when we come down into the third dimension, that oneness does separate, and that's the story that's embedded in Osiris. Ah, uh, yes. And how he was chopped into pieces. Now, the whole uh, geometry thing, if you think about it, like w we have the, the clue there about the fish. Yes. Remember? And the symbol of Jesus was the fish. And we discussed this before. The fish is the symbol of the viscous basia. Yes. Which is the si which is the symbol and the shape that you get when you connect two circles. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start one of the, f the second steps of your geometry. Yeah. Creating your flower of life. You draw one circle and then you draw another circle. And mm -hmm. where those circles interconnect, you've got what's called the viscous basia. Yeah. And that was the symbol for the mystery school initiates. Not just Jesus. That was the symbol for all mystery school initiates. Okay. The inter, inter... Yes. Yeah. That's how they knew. It would be drawn maybe on their hand. Oh, wow. And they would just show that to another initiate and they knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in the olden days... Because it represented uh, the geometry. The geometry. Not fish, it's the geometry it represents. Mm -hmm. In Egypt and in Greek, the Greek mystery schools, like Pythagoras and everyone, if you mentioned anything about that outside, oh yeah, you could be killed. Well, the, in particular, the dodecahedron. Yeah. The fifth element, it was called. Yeah, the fifth element. Yeah. Because each of the geometric shapes, mm -hmm. when you draw your flower of life, when you get familiar with the flower of life, mm -hmm. when you see it at first, all it looks like is interconnecting circles. Mm -hmm. But when you start joining those interconnecting circles with straight lines, in other words, joining the dots, yeah. you know, what you come out with then is what's called the platonic solids. Yes. And the platonic solids are literally the shape of all matter in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. There's no matter that's formed that doesn't form according to one of these five platonic solid shapes. Mm -hmm. And y you can also say six platonic solids if you're going to consider the circle. Yeah. So if you count the circle, there's actually six platonic solids. Mm -hmm. But most people don't count the circle because all of the platonic solids, platonic solids arise from a circle. Mm. So they say five. So the five platonic solids represent the five elements. Yeah. Earth, air, water, fire, ether. So the fifth element was known, as your mom just mentioned, the fifth element was ether. Mm -hmm. And the, the symbol or the geometric shape of ether is the dodecahedron. Mm -hmm. And ether, you might say, is most comparable to creator consciousness 
Mm. Yeah. So in the Pythagorean schools, if you discussed the dodecahedron to anybody that wasn't an initiate, mm -hmm. the punishment apparently, and I always think this is very funny, they say the punishment apparently for something like this was death. I think that's very funny. And I don't think it's true. Because why would somebody who knew there was no death be afraid of being killed <laughs> be like, if they yeah. told the secret? Like, yeah. hey. <laughs> Makes no sense. So <laughs> we that. made that up. Mm -hmm. We made that bit up that if anyone told that that they'd be killed, but like, why would they be? Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't be worried about they'd it. Be like, like, another time okay, practice, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, what have we got here? <laughs> give me your best. <laughs> give me your best. Yeah. But so, so maybe like if that's made a slightly bit more. I hope maybe it's made it slightly more clear about what the, the flare of life symbol actually represents. Yes. Mm. And why it's so mind blowing because don't forget this symbol was put there thousands and thousands of years ago and as we've established the Osirian temple all the temples in Egypt are really old but the Osirian temple is even older than all the temples in Egypt absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. you know and it's it's if you look at images of it as I said if you google the Osirian temple you'll see that it's not like any other temple oh no it's completely um, different. and as Christine just mentioned it's more comparable to the Sphinx temple at Giza yeah, mm -hmm. so it would have been around they might have the same been, time. They might have been comparable, but I feel it's earlier even than that. Yeah, maybe. and it's but it's the same. Um, arch, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas the temples are are they've got all hieroglyphs on the walls, mm -hmm. and whereas the Osirian Temple and as at Giza, it's very clear, clean lines. You del it, yeah, with no it delineates hieroglyphs that it's completely or, older. Yeah, like, you can see it's it's the most interesting thing, and and about a lot of places around the world, the older it is. The more sophisticated it is, mm. yeah, which is like oh, we definitely, ha we have not been told yeah, our true even, history. Oh no, because we've, we've degressed. The modern we, stuff when you see when you see the Osirian and regressed. you're looking at it, it's like a big crater <laughs> that's been scooped <laughs> out. Degressed. I just make my words up there. I know, and <laughs> you see it, but all on the very top of it, like on the on the visual um, sky at the edge, right? Your periphery. I'm trying to remember the correct uh, art term for it. Your vantage point. Anyway, perspective wise, are little tiny bricks because mm. they're the newest. Mm. And they can't make anything exactly, like the yeah. ground floor right. level, which Even is huge pillars with mm. crisp, clean edges. You yeah, know? you can see the time moving yes. forward. You yeah, yeah, the, the architecture. Like, uh, all the the temples that we know now, they're like notes on the beginning one, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. That's like said. explaining it. Oh, very good. Very, very well good. Said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Exploration. So, mm. so the Osirian mi good. mysteries we talked about are reincarnations and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then explain to us the yeah. difference between the Akhenaten that we were talking so, about. So, very good. Before. So, inside, if you can compare, if you can say that Seti First Temple is dedicated or the information that it contains is all what we've just discussed about the raising of the Jed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what was done. That was another mm -hmm. famous festival that was done. Yeah. So Abydos was famous for having the head of the of Osiris. Mm -hmm. It was famous for the body of Osiris being put back together and mm -hmm. therefore the creation of the first mummy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was famous for the raising of the dead because that's what happened at Abydos. Yeah. Those people who were raised from the dead happened at Abydos mm -hmm. because each place had a speciality. Yes. Right. And you could nearly look at these places like, I don't want to put this idea into your head, but you could almost look at them as like, hospital is the wrong word to use. But centers of healing. Yeah. Healing. healing, definitely. What became in our modern world hospitals. Mm -hmm. Hospitals are the distorted version of what these mm -hmm. things were. That's really interesting. It was energy healing. It was consciousness healing. The temples yeah. were used for the initiate to go in and lie down and sleep and dream. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Because that's how you... Temples were used for dreaming. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. came back with the information from there. Well, that's interesting because when we... Last time I went with Antoinette on her journey, we were privileged to be able to go to Saqqara, mm. see the Seraphim mm. and see the giant boxes. Yeah, yeah. But mm. I knew that I'm interested in the Hathor energy and they were sound and color healers because mm -hmm. I'm interested in color. And we saw the little rooms that are left at Saqqara oh, yeah. on the side mm. where they did the chanting. The chambers, yeah. The chambers. So that that And they had healing table there. Crystal. He yeah, crystal, crystal It's tables. all crystal. Mm. And um, I was telling Charlotte about that. Well, we'll be going on the journey and I can't wait to show her that mm. in Saqqara. This sound, she can do some chanting. She's a singer. Yeah. Mm. I'll be doing my do, re, mi. Well, it's interesting. And if you kind of really make this simple, because it is simple. Yeah. The geometry, the flare of life geometry is frequency made visible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sound made visible. Yes, yeah, cymatics. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at a sacred geometric shape, what you're looking at is a sound. A sound is what you can hear with your ears. Mm -hmm. A frequency is something 
You, you okay, there's frequencies right? you won't necessarily feel, obviously. But a frequency or a vibration is something that you'll feel in your body. Mm. You'll feel it, yeah. you know, if I do that. Yeah. You'll feel it. <laughs> but that's a sound as well. I just shook the table there, sorry, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can't see. <laughs> so if I uh, make a vibration by shaking the table, I was just demonstrating that Charlotte could feel it under her elbow, the vibration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if I make a sound, you'll hear it in your ear. Yeah. So a vibration is something, not something necessarily that you hear in your ear. But okay. sound and vibration and frequency are all the same thing, if you know what I mean. Well, sound is measured in Exactly. Frequency. Yeah, that's exactly. And so and it correlates to a color, because a frequency is also a color. Yeah, and what I'm Rainbow. trying to get at here is that mm -hmm. the geometry, the sacred geometry, are certain frequencies mm -hmm. Yeah. made visible. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I mean? Yeah. So, and they're all the frequencies that are required to make up physical matter. Yeah. Now, can you see how advanced the science is? Oh, yeah. Can you see how advanced their, their knowledge was? Mm -hmm. It's more advanced than what we understand today. Yeah. So, the flower of life symbol actually contains all the science that I'm talking about. Mm. It does, yeah. It's a, it, it, yeah. The flower of life symbol is the hollow records. Yeah. That people talk about. Yeah. The hollow records is not necessarily kept in one location. Mm-hmm. The flower oh, of the hall of records doesn't exist in the third dimension. No. The actual there's loads of halls of records, as I mentioned, that exist in a physical form under the temples, and we were actually in one when we went under the temple in Dendra. Do you remember? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that's a hall of records. That's the physical hall of records. Oh okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and they exist under all the temples. Hmm. But the Hall of Records that, say, for example, Edgar Casey was talking about. I was about. just going to say, yeah. Edgar Casey sent many people and they're still going. And the Halls of Amenti. And the Halls of Amenti. Um, Doors. They do not exist in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. That Hall of Records does not exist in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. But the Flower of Life symbol is the visual mm. for that. It's also, you've heard of the Akashic Records? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Flower of Life symbol is the Akashic Records mm. made visible. Yeah. So all the different geometries are frequencies made visible, sounds made visible. And they're the sounds that we, they're the sounds of our own body, of our own creation, yeah. if you like. Yeah. Um, your thoughts make a sound. Mm, every organ in your body makes a sound. It all has a unique sound. If you were to hear all the sounds that every organ in your body makes, mm. your thoughts thinking, everything, you're actually a universe. And does that go a verse, to your, a universe. your bio photons? Like, the yes. thing is, our eyes can't see it, but we are, our thoughts create light. All we Just are like, is light. <laughs> So they don't like create dolphins. light we are light well that's what I'm saying but our eyes can only see a very narrow yes. frequency because yes. it's physical yeah and what shape is your eye your eye is a viscous basia yeah exactly <laughs> so the shape of the viscous basia mm -hmm. which is how when you join two circles together it's the it. shape that you get in the middle and it was the symbol for Jesus and the symbol for all the initiates that they would mm -hmm. put on their hand um, why that symbol was amazing is because it's the shape of your eye mm -hmm. And it's uh, your eye that perceives the light mm -hmm. that creates the illusion of the third dimension. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The window to the soul. It's, so it's the gateway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the window gateway to there. the soul. That's it. Well, and it's also the shape of what all children are born through, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. When a woman is given birth. Yes. Yeah. So it's that like shape. That's it. Well, it's the portal they come through it's into the portal. physical wow. matter. Yeah. And that's why you see, for example, Jesus. And sometimes even like um, in a lot of cathedrals, Mary and the child, Jesus, mm -hmm. you see they're coming through this. Through the viscous, see a, viscous there's many examples show. in fine arts of, of them walking on a cathedral ceiling through the viscous mm. basia, yeah. So the, like a halo, right? Yes, yes. The halo is the light body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Your halo is your light body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what the halo around the mm -hmm. saints and all that was portraying the light body. Mm -hmm. So um, and all of this information is also um, how we create our light body. Mm. So the Osarian mysteries are talking about what was known as resurrection. Resurrection is when you have what we call a death experience, but mm -hmm. come back into the same body. Yeah. And all the initiates were working towards that experience in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. Remember, because we mentioned, if you listen to near-death experiences and listen to a person who's had a near-death experience, they will come back always with the knowledge that all is one. Love everybody and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Animals, plants, birds, because yes. we're all one. Mm -hmm. They'll come back with the Im with the knowledge of the light. Yeah. The light that it's loving, all encompassing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The light that's intelligent and communicates to them telepathically. Yes. Yeah. And the light that tells them and allows them to make their own decisions. We we talk about the judgment. There is no judgment. Well, you judge yourself. It's you 
who makes the decision mm. based on a gentle guidance. Yeah. Which is given to you by your own higher self, actually. Yeah, of course, mm. yes. Yeah. You know, because um, when you also listen to what people call near-death experiences, you'll find that all these people often had to ask questions. Yeah. They had to find their way through different types of like mazes, you know, mm-hmm. in their out of body yeah. state. Yes. Um, and they didn't know what was wrong with them. Mm. I'll give you a good example of one I just heard or read actually there just recently. I'll say it very quick because I want to get back to what I'm saying. This guy, he was only a young guy. He was only 19 years of age and he was at a party with his friends and he ended up doing this drug that he'd never done before and his friend even told him not to, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he ended up snorting this drug, which you're not meant to snort. Mm-hmm. And he snorted too much of it because he didn't know. But anyway, his friend had said to him, listen, you did, and, but your man wasn't it. And he said, no, I'm grand, I'm grand. And he went out the back and thought, <laughs> yeah. nothing wrong with me. Fine, but then he started to feel real weak and everything. And anyway, but he came back in, sat in the chair. And as he was lying there, he said he could feel his heart getting slower and slower and slower. Oh, and he kept thinking to himself, is this the effect of the drug? Like, was my friend right? Did I take too much? Blah, 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 blah. Mm. So he said the next thing he said to himself, oh, here, I'm not, you know. And he jumped up real quick to not let his heart keep getting slower and slower, you know. And he jumped up and all his friends were asleep on the on the floor, but the music was blaring and there was a door song playing and he was saying, oh my God, that music is driving me mad. And he went over to the... Um, DJ or the radio? Yeah, the re- record player or whatever it was and tried to turn the sound down mm-hmm. and his hand just passed through the... Because <laughs> when he jumped up, he was out of his body, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't turn it down. So he started to shout at his friends, like, can somebody turn this sound down? Can somebody turn this? Because he didn't instantly recognize that his hand passed through it. Yeah. Because he was a bit confused and, you know. Mm. Yes, and might th- be. <laughs> that is what happens, though. That's what happens when you leave your body. Of course, yeah. You're confused. Because nobody has ever trained you on what to do when you leave your body. <laughs> no. Because everybody you. thinks that when you leave your body, there's nothing. No. So exactly. all of a sudden, when you leave your body and you suddenly realize, hold on a minute, there is and yeah. I don't know what to do here <laughs> exactly. because nobody ever told me yes. yeah. well in the ancient world they told everybody yeah how to do it yeah. here there's something after this don't get confused and lost when you leave this body because it. mm-hmm. it's easy to get confused and oh, lost absolutely. Mm-hmm. and so that's what all the book of common force was, like, was to make sure that yeah. souls did not get confused and lost when they left the body mm-hmm. so I'm just giving an example of a modern day version yeah. so this guy and this would be a confused and lost soul Yes. Yeah. Who knew nothing about this ancient information No. he would or not they, have had any of this and confusion and terror in his out of body state did he know all this information he didn't know that's what I'm saying a lot of you don't know when you you die you don't know you don't know it takes a while for you to realise you're dead Mm -hmm. you don't instantly know you're dead no and um, because you're still thinking and talking to yourself so you don't know you you don't instantly even know that your body is gone no yeah Um, and this guy didn't so anyway long story short he was walking around the house and the music was driving him mad and he was saying and shouting at his friends trying to get them up because they were all asleep he still didn't know he was dead and um but the music was driving him mad and he tried to get out the door. So he went to the door and he tried to grab the handle of the door. And again, he couldn't get out. But he still didn't immediately recognise what was going on. Mm-hmm. And he was walking. symbology because of the doors. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. But he was trying to get out of the house because the music was no, no, playing yeah, no, so no, loud. But yeah, the doors definitely. <laughs> but if you think of the book of Come Forth by Light and think of what this guy was going through. Mm-hmm. He was trying to get out through doors. Yeah. Now, of course, there is a section in it called the seven, the seven doorways doors. or the seven, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So... Or the seven portals. portals That's what we yeah. were doing. And That's it. So anyway, this poor guy wandered around his house with the music blared and driving him mental. Couldn't wake up any of his mates and couldn't get out of the house. Doors were driving him mental. So he was going, what am I going to do here? How do I get out of this house? He couldn't figure it. And at that point, he started to think there's something wrong. Now why, why can't what? I... Why can't you know, I leave this place? Why can't I leave this place? Why can't I touch anything? And the minute he started to think that, this being of light oh. Oh, came huh. into the room. Now, the story takes off from there yeah. <laughs> because yes. he went out of the house with the being of light. Of course. Oh, yes, of and course. his story is mind blown. Yeah. Wow. What he experienced. It's mm-hmm. just, it's really mind blown. It's yeah. just a, a person's account of their near death. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a thing called IANS. It's the International IA, an International Association for Near Death Experiences. Mm-hmm. I A N D S, mm-hmm. it's called. And if you go on and Google that, you, the experiences of some people, like, it's just crazy. Yeah. It really is. Like, but that is. The book of coming forth by light. And as I said to you, in the book of coming forth by light, the soul, and that's what's written on the walls, because when the body leaves, it walks around and looks at the walls and it knows what to do, because that's the instructions. It reads the formula. It doesn't get lost. It doesn't get confused. It's not freaking out, why is my hand going through this? Mm-hmm. Now, the story I told about that young guy goes on longer. Yes, of course. And the guy is absolutely panicking. He's freaked. He's completely in distraught. He doesn't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he, he can't get out of the house. Mm-hmm. And you can imagine, this went on for a long, there is no time there. But That's what I'm saying. How long did it go on? In his experience, on? that could be eternity. Yeah, of course. And this guy's trapped in this house, mm-hmm. you know. 
So that's what people consider to be like ghosts. Yeah. People who yeah. have left their body and they're lost. Yeah. They don't know where to go. Yes. They don't even know they're dead. Yes. They're, they're just going around the same space. They're walking around their house trying to get out. That's it. That's it. You know? And they don't know how. Mm-hmm. So somebody who would know this information could walk into a space where a person might feel there's a ghost in my house. Yeah. And a person can walk in and not all this exorcism stuff. You just not that a ghost would need it, but you know what I mean. The way a church would might deal with it. Mm-hmm. A person in the in the uh, of this ancient philosophy, if you like, would just walk in and and communicate mm-hmm. yeah. this information to the trapped the person. person. Mm-hmm. The first thing you need to tell them is you're dead. Mm-hmm. You've left your body. Now I know there's no such word as dead, but to the to your the, body is no longer functioning. your body is not with you. Now that brings me to the point of why we're actually here. So the resurrection cycle that we're talking about, that's contained on the information in the Osirian mysteries. Mm-hmm. Is about how we are born and reincarnated throughout the cycle of time. Yeah. Known as the processional cycle. Mm. Which is 25,920 years in linear time. Yeah. I've discussed the processional cycle before. Mm -hmm. And all the temples are based on the numbers of the processional cycle. Mm -hmm. They're all aligned to mirror the stars. Yes, right. In Ireland, in Egypt, in South America, all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of this processional cycle. Yeah. They're tracking the processional cycle. Why? Because it's this cycle that we reincarnate in and out of all the time. Yeah. So we can say that this is the reincarnation cycle. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now there's two things. There's reincarnation or resurrection. Yeah. Resurrection. So I'm the difference between the two. Resurrection is when a person is um, goes has a death experience yeah. and comes back into the same body. Now the mystery school initiates were doing that over and over and over and over again. So that they would fully, 100% directly know there is no such thing as death and I am eternal. Yeah, so it's literally to abdicate their fear. To abdicate their fear, to um, to go through the cycle consciously and reincarnation. The idea of what we call dying and then being reborn again. And in between the idea of us dying and being reborn, there's a memory wipe. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a memory wipe, unless you're trained to not to ha- allow your memory to be wiped yeah and this is what all the ancient mystery school training was about this is what's written in the book of coming forth by light how not to allow your memory to be wiped when you go from the process that we call death into rebirth yeah. there's a little window there mm-hmm. there's a little they call it the halls of a menti yes the hallway that you have to pass through mm-hmm. and it's this if you look at that hallway imagine walking into a shop and there's a hot air shower You know the hot air that comes down? Imagine the hallway is like that. And you walk through this hot air shower and when you come out the other side, your memory's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Your memory of the life you've just left is gone. Mm -hmm. No memory. You're a clean slate. And that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Second. And everything of this life is gone. And you're walking into a whole new experience and you have no memory of ever been there before. That's it. Yeah. And now you're here and it's all new again and you don't ever know that you've and been you here before. And you make the same mistakes again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you make the same mistakes and blah, blah, blah. And on and on. But and well, not necessarily because you always have... The residual uh, memories. Everybody has it in their subconscious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but the idea is it's to bring it to your conscious mind. Yeah. So you have to know I've that been here know. before. And to m- remember a past life... Is the, mystery, is the training on how to have continuity of our memory. Yeah. So they would go through the resurrection cycle, which is which was the Assyrian mysteries, being um, passing from body to body and, and not always human body. Remember I said yeah. you can be a tree? Everything. Everything, exactly. So when you complete this cycle of the processional cycle, let's say, uh, of 3D time, you should, if you've done your job right, mm-hmm. as a soul coming into the third dimension, by the time you finish this complete cycle of resurrection, which mm-hmm. is what the Osirian mysteries are talking about, you should know everything. You should have been everything. Mm-hmm. You should know what it's like to be a tree, a bird, a, stone, a flower, a stone, water, mm-hmm. air, the Ish. cloud, everything. And when that's complete, you do what's called... Ascension. Mm-hmm. So ascension is a different thing. Yeah. yeah. And so I want to get on to um, Akhenaten. <laughs> so can I, can I ask one question before yeah. Akhenaten? The Jed 
Raising of the Jed, mm-hmm. right? That, yeah. that that was to do with the reincarnation. Well, I was trying to make this quick, but since you brought it up again. Sorry, I just have to say resurrection. That would be the Jed pillar, yeah. raising the Jed mm-hmm. pillar. And that's the mm-hmm. symbol inside the Seti. Yeah, in the Seti first temple. So there's a thing called a Jed pillar and... Um, it's like your back. You'll have to Google and have a look at it yeah. again. Just mm-hmm. have a Google of it. And, and just Jed, by the way, sorry, is spelled D J E D. That's it. D J E D. Jed, uh, as in the Jedi. Yeah. As in Star Wars, he Star stole Wars. it from the Jedi. From the Jedi oh yeah, priests. yeah, yeah, yeah. It literally, he's talking about the priests, the Jedi priests. Oh, it is. Yeah, the mm. priests of the Jedi. They were real. They were real. Yeah. So it's D J. Uh, what did I say? D J E D I. D J E. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So the Jed pillar. Since you, I'm I was, just, sorry, <laughs> Christine I just, brought this. I brought it up. Um, time anyway, about. so okay, I'll I'll say this. Just I wasn't because going it has to, to do with anyway. the resurrection, and it is in Seti the first temple. Okay, I'm going to tell you this part that I wasn't actually going to talk about, but anyway, <laughs> um, she is. The Great Pyramid encodes the two axes of the Earth. Yes. Okay. Now, up to this, we've been talking about the body and resurrection and everything else. Mm-hmm. Now, I've just mm-hmm. kind of sticking to that because but this is also it. what's told in. The Seti First Temple and Abydos. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. Jump to the Giza Plateau. Mm-hmm. In the Great Pyramid itself. Mm-hmm. And it, that's a whole story to, to actually explain how this is. But I can explain it in another podcast. Yeah, maybe. we'll do it mm-hmm. next. But the two axes of the Earth are encoded in the Great Pyramid. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what I mean by the two axes is the upright axis of the Earth mm-hmm. and the tilted axis. Right. Whoa, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Which has to do with the procession of the cycles as well, right? So the tilted axis of the Earth... Kind of wobbles a little bit, but it goes from anything to 23.4, 23.5 degrees tilt yeah. from upright. Yeah. So you've got this. Posi- I'm just holding up two pens here to show Charlotte. the, the mm-hmm. So you've got an upright position mm-hmm. and you've got w- another position that's tilted at this angle. Mm-hmm. So you're going to need to Google um, the tilt of the Earth's yeah. axis mm-hmm. to see what I'm talking about. Looks like an acute angle. It's an, it's an angle. So... It's 23, 23 approximately 0.45 degrees mm-hmm. from upright. Mm-hmm. Those two angles mm-hmm. are encoded in the Great Pyramid. Mm-hmm. If you flip back down to Seti First Temple mm-hmm. and the Jed Pillar mm-hmm. on the walls in Abydos, yes. you'll see on the walls of the temple, they'll show you two Jed Pillars. Mm-hmm. They'll show you one Jed Pillar that's standing upright. Mm-hmm. And they'll show you another jet pillar that's at tilted uh-huh. at an angle. Uh-huh. There you go. So it's encoding both informations. So the jet pillar that's tilted at an angle, mm-hmm. you'll see the characters that are on the wall. Mm-hmm. They have like a rope around it. Yes. The one that's tilted at the angle. Mm-hmm. And they're pulling it up straight. Yeah, they're raising the jet pillar. That's what's called raising the jet. Mm-hmm. Which? Now... Uh, can can we see how much symbology there is in this? Yes. Yeah. So we're not just talking about something simple here. No. We're talking about raising the jet. They're talking about the axis of the earth mm-hmm. yes. and how it relates to the consciousness of, of those of that are inhabiting the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The now that's another huge thing. Okay. We'll definitely do one on that one because it's very interesting. Well, let me tell you one thing: the axis. If you think the axis of the earth does not affect your consciousness. <laughs> Let me just tell you this one thing. Think again. <laughs> the first motion of the Earth is the revolution of the Earth on its own axis. Yes. Which causes the phenomenon of what we call night and day. That's correct. Light yes. and dark. Mm-hmm. Light and dark, night and mm-hmm. day is what determines whether you are awake or asleep. Mm-hmm. I'll go no further. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the axis of the Earth affects your consciousness. Yeah. I'm only giving you a small bit of information yeah, there because that's another whole thing. We'll come it back is. to it. We'll come back to it. But that was, I wanted to mention the Jed. So raising the Jed has to do with that as well. In But just for people, if anyone's coming on the journey with us, this information is all encoded inside Seti the First Temple. Oh yeah. The raising of the Jed pillar. All the information is yeah. encoded yeah, in yeah. all the temples because it's yeah, holographic. I just remember distinctly because I was very yes, interested yes, in raising yes. of the Jed pillar. So Abydos was famous for raising of the Jed. Mm-hmm. And the raising of the Jed doesn't just relate to the raising because don't forget I told you. The... Jed Pillar mm-hmm. was symbolic of the backbone of Osiris. Exactly. Mm. So it had it all was of the meaning. also symbolic of the axis of the earth. Okay. The, yeah. As above, so below, the correspondence thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So raising the Jed is not just about talking about the axis of the earth, mm-hmm. which, as I've just described, affects our consciousness mm-hmm. to the degree that the very first movement 
the smallest movement of the Earth on its axis, which is the revolution of the Earth on the axis, which takes 24 hours, which causes the phenomenon of light and day. Mm-hmm. Which causes the phenomenon Sorry, of Sorry, night and day. And, well, sleep um, and awake. Light and dark, which causes sleep and awake. So that affects your consciousness profoundly. Mm-hmm. So if you can look at the larger cycle of the processional cycle, mm-hmm. it causes the same phenomenon. For part of the cycle, we're asleep. But uh, we think of being asleep as in, okay, we're awake now and when we go to bed at night, we're asleep. But lower energy, lower consciousness. If you think of yourself as being asleep when you're in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. Because to the ancient mind, people in the third dimension were dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The third dimension was the land of the dead. Yeah. We are in the (laughs) country. Contrary to what we think. Yeah. We think that people who've passed on are dead. But they're actually back in their higher consciousness. <laughs> we yeah. think that's the land of the dead, the people who've passed on. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. To the people that are there. <laughs> we're the zombies. To the people that are there. <laughs> Bit of an they're saying, more on there. That's the yeah. land of the dead. That's we're, called the paradox. We're the, we're the dead. Paradox. Because the people with higher consciousness have been <clears throat> set free from all of this lower we are, we density. Are the people. I know it's hard to understand. And we are the people of that higher consciousness. We are that higher consciousness right. because mm-hmm. we actually exist in all the dimensions. Yes. Yeah. You exist in your higher self form right now and there's no time so we're this lifetime and that life this all happening now exactly Mm -hmm. so the whole idea of the raising of the jed is to do what what i just mentioned earlier there was to do with ascension yes now we talked about resurrection and the resurrection cycle and the resurrection mysteries which are all to do with osiris yes isis and horus yes and that's all to do with the birth and the divine child and the resurrection and then we come to what I mentioned was ascension. And ascension is done when you have resurrected, mm-hmm. been reborn with full memory throughout yep. this cycle so many times that you fully are consciously aware. And you're no longer afraid you've of You've lived mm-hmm. many lives. Yes, exactly. That you've reincarnated many times. Mm-hmm. And when you're fully aware of that, in terms of the mystery schools, you are now ready to ascend, which mm-hmm. is a different thing. So now I want to talk about Akhenaten because Akhenaten was and has been also um, accused of being the one who um, tried to kill off the Osirian mysteries. Yeah. And people say that he tried to stop people, the people who don't like Akhenaten. Yeah. You know, um, and I mean people who write about him, in, even in the modern world and the ancient you world. You mean the heretic king, which is mm. all they call him. Which is That's what they the call label him, yeah. they call him. So it's in your, your programmed in and your And they mind. try to write him out of history. Yeah, and I exactly. mean, they only do that to people who are a threat. But anyway. That's it. Um, so... What he was doing was he was trying to elevate Mm -hmm. and accelerate the work that people were doing. And he was trying to get people who were almost ready, if you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. and elevate them to the point where they were able to ascend rather than to keep going around the reincarnation cycle. Mm -hmm. So now there's neither one is I'm not trying to say that the Osirian mysteries and the resurrection mysteries and the reincarnation is a bad thing. No, it's what you have to do. It's what you have to do before you can ascend. The first step. Before you can ascend. Yeah, so, yeah. And so Akhenaten was on that next level, if you like. And he mm-hmm. were, he was taking people um, that were as ready, you know, as they could be. And maybe even people who were almost ready, if you like. Um, through, I and mean, the reason I'm saying that is because he felt, uh, um, he knew that the consciousness was almost um, the high consciousness of the golden age that had existed for such a long time. He knew that that was almost lost yeah. to everybody in physical matter yeah. because of the time that of the cycle that we were in yeah. because of the way the M1 priesthood had taken control yeah. because of the way the knowledge had got lost mm-hmm. down through the generations yes. up to his time mm-hmm. and so because he just rediscovered the Emerald Tablets mm-hmm. because he was in the lineage of these people yes. who, who kept this information alive mm-hmm. he was able to at his time say okay we need to accelerate what's happening here because if we don't if we don't take a certain amount of mystery school initiates who, as I just mentioned, may not, could have might have done a bit more time maybe, but because of the time that was in it, mm-hmm. they, they were moved forward pushed faster. Them to, pushed them through. And that's yeah. what Akhenaten did. And it was mostly women, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he accelerated through the, the phase of ascension, yes. which is those people who had reincarnated for the 25,920 years were fully remembered, yes. knew they had done this. Yeah, remembered all their past lives. And now was looking at the ascension. And ascension means to be elevated, to rise to a higher level. Mm -hmm. So I hope I've explained the distinct difference between between resurrection resurrection. and ascension. Mm -hmm. 
So Akhenaten was kind of the next step on, if you like. Mm -hmm. And he was taking people out of the third dimension. Mm -hmm. Those who were already. Because the third dimension continues infinitely. Mm -hmm. There's always souls coming in to experience the third dimension. Mm -hmm. And they will need to move around this cycle before they fully know that they are everything. Yeah. And then they can ascend to a new cycle. And then, of course, the lessons in the the higher cycle will be subtler and finer and... Yeah. So, Akhenaten, you could say, was, I suppose, on a kind of another advanced stage of that, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Even though that information is advanced, you know, the whole idea of... Um, when well, highly advanced when you consider what we understand today. And he he um, he wasn't meant to be Pharaoh. His brother was, and he Akhenaten. Was, yeah. Yeah. And he was before he changed his name to Akhenaten. He was um, he was in the city of the sun, right in mm. uh, mm. Cairo, Heliopolis. Heliopolis right? as yeah. a priest. So he yeah. was learning all these mysteries as a young man. Yeah. Mm. That's right. Yeah, and so. As we as we discussed already as well, it was Akhenaten's lineage that we can trace back into ancient Ireland as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think I, think I can it. almost nearly wrap it up. There's just one thing I meant to mention actually that I didn't mention, and it's it's an interesting point for anybody who's um who wants to come on the journey or who's going to Egypt themselves. Like yes, either way, yeah. can't wait March. Um, in the Seti First Temple, there's something quite. Well, it's relatively famous, you know, a lot of people would know about it. It's called the Abydos Helicopter. <laughs> um, now, I've heard rage and debates on the internet. I've, you know, uh, gone on to forums and things where I see people arguing about whether this is actually real or not. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I it saw is. It, it's it is real. real. It is real. Oh, I've no, seen, I've it, seen mi- it twice. I've seen it's it a million not times. It's photoshopped. It's actually on the wall. It is on the wall. <laughs> and here's three people here. I have been yeah, there all loads three of us have times. seen it. Loads of times. Um, you've seen it a million times. I've seen it twice. Uh, it's real. It is absolutely 100% real. It's... Um, and it's more than just a helicopter. There's more things there than just a helicopter. Oh, yeah. So, um, I think we'll finish it there. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But anyway, if anyone wishes to join us on the journey, get in touch with Antonet. Where, Antonet, is your website? Or Oh, yeah, so mm-hmm. the journey is in March. It's the 10th to the 21st, and it's the Equinox. Yes. Equinox mm-hmm. journey. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, on that journey, we'll go through the seven seals of the Nile, as I mentioned earlier, which basically means that we move through the seven chakras. And I will, of course, we do our Flower of Life workshop and I will give you all the information that relates to each temple and to each lesson in each chakra, if you like. Mm -hmm. We'll um, understand more of the mysteries, the symbols. We learn the language of the symbols. And as we move along, um, we move up through the temples and end on the last day, which is the equinox. On the Giza Plateau in the in Great the Pyramid. Pyramid. In kind, the of, kind of epic. Yes, epic. kind of epic, yes. say. Which is where the, the final initiations, of course, yeah. occurred for the crown uh, and the third eye. Mm-hmm. And you can understand now maybe a little bit more when I say the final initiation before the initiate was ready for ascension. Yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah. Okay. That took place in the Great Pyramid. And, and the Great Pyramid was the portal through which they would ascend. Exactly. Right. Points up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, so, you, and you also said that before, in podcast before, it was like... Uh, the cross of matter, you know, like in the that's a good point, Christine. Yeah, um, the yeah, you, I you mentioned it before, so yeah. So, um, the crucifixion that we read about in the Bible, of course, is um, an initiation. it's a modern retelling yeah. of an initiation that took place on the Giza plateau, as Christine just mentioned, and that initiation was called the crucifixion, but it was its longer title is the crucifixion on the cross of matter, mm-hmm. um. And that's, it's, again, we're talking about a language of symbols. So the symbol that is the cross contains a huge amount of information in and of itself. You could actually take each symbol and do oh, a yeah. whole lecture on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. So for this podcast, we'll finish it here. Mm-hmm. And thank you for listening. And if anybody wants to come on the journey in March, just send me an email to info at flareoflight.com. I would welcome seeing you there. Um, and if not, of course, I'm working in Ireland as well. And you can email me about anything you might be interested in. Do you, in ha- you have something for the summer solstice here as well, right? I have a summer solstice journey on and I have workshops which are sacred geometry, flower of life workshops. And I have one on at the end of January, mm-hmm. um, beginning of February, which is symbolic. Yeah. I have one for Lunasa, 
mm-hmm. in August mm-hmm. and I have one for Samhain great which are Home. all in Ireland yeah they're all weekend workshops yeah. and the dates are all on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, but and the, again, I'm doing journeys to Egypt, Egypt, one in March. Yes. And I will have one in September and one in December. Yeah, for next year. Of 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for the um, summer solstice, that will parallel the Egyptian ones, but through the Irish sacred sites. Well, to be honest, you couldn't really do um, a summer solstice journey in Egypt. It's too hot. <laughs> no, no, I no, no. I meant like the Irish will parallel the oh, yeah. sites of Egypt, like you're saying the seven seals. Oh, the seven seals correlating yes, in the, yes, in yeah, the yeah, Irish yeah. journey as well. Yeah, if someone is um, interested. Oh yeah, the in Irish that. journeys are, um, and they're newer. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Good point. And the Irish journeys are, as Christian mentioned, um, I show how they mirror. Yes. Um, as you yeah, mentioned, it's very, the seven. very interesting, and um, I'll just give you one. The Great Pyramid correlates with. Newgrange, am I correct? Absolutely, with Newgrange yeah. and also with Ishnak. Ishnak, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so it's, and the whole of the Boyne Valley yeah. in the mounds like Newgrange and like um, Dothan, Dothan. Dothan, yeah. They're a physical telling of the Book of Coming Forth by Light. And again, it's told in the form of shape, mm-hmm. symbols, Structure. and the numbers the mathematical equations and ratios that are used in the construction of the site. Mm-hmm. But the really interesting, fascinating thing for me, because I've done both. They're gateways and portals. It, yeah, gateways and portals. But the portals in Ireland are feminine. Yeah. And the portals in Egypt, they have a male-female aspect, but they're more masculine well, in according terms of like, to the, architecture. They are definitely, in, in, yeah. by their architecture, yeah, they are, yeah, because the lions yeah. in the temples in Egypt yes. are straight yes. and angular. Yes. Yeah. And straight and angular lines in geometry is male energy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And curved, spiraled, and circled lines in geometry is feminine energy. Yes. So when you look at the sites in Ireland, they're all mound circles. Yeah. So it's definitely feminine energy. Yeah, yeah. And as you mentioned, in Egypt, there are straight lines, like pyramid yeah. shapes, well, rectangular me, temples, yeah. you know, square chambers. So that it, it does have that well, male me, energy. That's component. the balance right there. Like, so yeah. I've done both. I've done the Irish and the Egyptian. It is the balance. And it yeah. is so. It's so unique, and mm. it, I don't. That's what I'm saying. This is the new mm. thing, which is if you match the female energy with the male energy. Yeah. So if you're attracted to Egypt, you're also probably attracted to yeah. the Irish ones Absolutely, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I would recommend doing both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's me. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, um, and thanks everybody for listening. And as I said, if you want to email me about anything, um, comments, questions, just anything, um, just email me at info at flowerofflight dot com, and I'd be happy to. The links will be in the description. Lips, yeah, exactly. Lips will be in the description. <laughs> links, links will be. Lips, not lips. lips, no not, lips, lips. not lips, no <laughs> lips, no lips, no lips. Okay, so thanks again, and I think say goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye. And goodbye, Christine. Goodbye. And goodbye, Antoinette. Yay. Okay, thank you again. Bye. Goodbye, bye. Thank you.